While there are a number of original trilogy Star Wars characters that never got the benefit of being introduced into the Kenner toy line, in my mind, there were three glaring omissions from those first three movies. The first of which is Grand Moff Tarkin. Now, we have had a Grand Moff Tarkin action figure in the uh, Hasbro kind of Kenner retro collection, but it's not quite up to scratch for me. I would love to see Stan Solo do their own take on Grand Moff Tarkin. But the other two characters uh, across the trilogy that I really believe should have got an action figure are first of all uh, Stormtrooper Han Solo and Stan Solo back when it was Smith Lord Creations. It's like the action figure that really put them on the map. Makes the perfect addition to your Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper disguise. You know, I never understood why Kenner didn't do this figure back in the day, considering that, you know, they'd already done the Luke Skywalker and you could use the same body mold and you've already got a head sculpt for Han, so why not just do it? But the third and final figure that I really felt that we should have got back in 1983 is Princess Leia in her slave girl outfit. But thanks to Chris Smith, it's like Ken has been reincarnated and we have been blessed with this beautiful action figure of Slave Leia. We're gonna check it out in the video, so stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. In the original Kenner Star Wars line, all the major characters got figure representations of all their different costumes. So from the first film, there was only one Princess Leia in her white gown, there was only one Han Solo, and we eventually got two Luke Skywalkers. We got Farm Boy Luke and X-Wing Luke. So over the course of the next two movies, we got all the different costume variations in action figure form for the three heroes, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and all of the costume variations for Princess Leia, minus one. In 1980, we got Leia in her Bespin gown, followed then by Leia in her Hoth outfit, Leia in her Boosh disguise with the removable helmet when she was kind of dressed as the bounty hunter, and then Princess Leia Organa in her Endor attired combat poncho, which is the only Princess Leia figure I actually have mint on card. But the glaring omission among this collection of Princess Leia three and three quarter inch scaled action figures is Slave Girl Leia. Now, before anyone jumps in the comments and says, hey, what about Bespin Escape Leia? We never got that figure back in the day. Well, the thing is, when I was a kid, that outfit was so similar to Hoth Leia, it really didn't bother me. And I just used to use my Hoth Leia action figure for Bespin Escape. I'm not gonna get into the reasons why Kenner haven't produced this figure and why Hasbro will probably never produce any version of this figure in the future. Political correctness, whatever you want to call it. I'm just really, really appreciative that collectors have not only been given the opportunity to acquire this action figure in the original Kenner style, but the fact that it has been produced by one of the best repro and custom makers, the best custom repro maker on the market. If you're looking for original Kenner style product, you can't go past Stan Solo Creations. And of all the different things that this company has achieved over the last few years, from the original Han in Stormtrooper disguise, to all the different droids they've given us, even to the Bantha that I reviewed recently, I honestly believe that this is the best product, the best that they have given us so far. This Leia is absolutely stunning. And she has been produced in that 100% Kenner aesthetic. The face of this figure kind of looks like a cross between Endor Leia and Bush Leia. She has a beautiful ponytail, which is, I believe, a separate piece that plugs into the back of the head. And even though the ponytail drapes over her right shoulder, it does not obstruct the turning of her head very much. She's got some beautiful gold detailing on the side of her head, representing some of the kind of armor decoration that she had in her hair. The green and gold bikini is beautiful. She's got a gold bracelet around one wrist and another kind of gold arm bracelet on the left arm and the green and gold boots. And all of this is topped off with a real cloth goods kind of drape 
um, that hangs from the lower part of her bikini. The front and back of this dress have got some beautifully molded and sculpted kind of metallic detail, which I believe has been glued onto the figure to hold in place the piece of material that uh, covers Her Majesty's modesty. But yeah, Leia is accessorized with this weapon that we saw released with a number of other Return of the Jedi characters. And after all these years of trying to will this action figure into existence, it's because there's one thing I've always wanted to be able to do. And today is just a, a special moment that I'm really gonna cherish. As we take the collar and rope from the deluxe Jabba the Hutt and clip it round Slave Leia's neck. Back in the day, we used to have to put this collar around Luke Skywalker or C-3PO or something like that. My vintage Kenner Jabba the Hutt collection is finally complete. And I can't thank Chris Smith and Stan Solo Creations enough for this marvelous piece of work. I do believe that Stan Solo has had a few production delays with this figure. So at the moment, only people who pre-ordered the Slave Layer action figure are getting them shipped out. If you want to purchase one of these, they will be available, but I believe it's not going to be for a couple of months yet. That being said, there is still a link to the Stan Solo Etsy page in the description of this video. Now, before I sign off, when this arrived in the mail the other day, I did get another two um, reproduction Stan Solo action figures. So I really want to quickly talk about those for a moment. And first of all, we have the A-Wing pilot. This is another one of the infamous last 17, which are ridiculously expensive nowadays. I'm just going to keep buying up the Stan Solo reproductions that he's putting out because they're absolutely spot on. And it's very pleasing for me to actually pair this figure up with the uh, Power of the Force 2 A-Wing that was very kindly donated to the channel by George Aitken. And the other figure that arrived in this parcel is the Death Star Gunner, an action figure that I've wanted since probably 1984, when my best friend Timmy down the road had one. He also had Luke and Stormtrooper disguise, but I just thought, you know, this all-black, sleek-looking version of the Death Star Gunner was just incredible. And to be able to display him here on my original Kenner Death Star playset, it's a dream come true. If you want to learn more about Stan Solo creations and some of the other action figures that they've produced over the last few years, you can click the links to these videos here. Or as I said, visit their Etsy store. The link is in the description below. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and I'll see you in the next video.